Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another episode of Business Every Day. We are here in the shop ready to work with some vinyl records once more, and I'm pretty excited about today and what we're going to accomplish. We're going to be building a jig and then using a few different methods to test with, to see how we can hold down this stock material the best. Uh, we're going to use the blue tape method. I'm going to build a jig out of MDF. We're going to try some spray adhesives and a couple of different other things that have come to mind on how we might accomplish holding down the stock material the best without getting the flippy floppy and having things go awry. So we are going to figure out how to work with this material today. And so come along and let's figure it out together. All right, method number one. We are gonna go with the blue tape adhesive. Stick this thing down and yeah, we're gonna see if this works. Am I optimistic? Not really, but we're gonna give it a go. Well, this is my setup. Um, I have blue tape, then double-sided tape, then I thought to put blue tape. Hey, you're okay. <laughs> this is my shop girl. We do everything together. <laughs> you're fine. Okay, so we got blue tape upon blue tape upon double-sided tape. And I'm just realizing that because there is no disc in the middle, uh, I'm going to have to use my Z-probe on the side and then move it back to the middle. So let's do that now and see how it goes. People, I am absolutely blown away by how good this thing cut. Wow, look at it. I mean, I still need to remove it from the blue tape, but that cut so clean compared to yesterday's carve. Let's pull it out of the tape and see how it looks. Might not need the razor blade. Or maybe I do. Oh my goodness, look at this thing. I mean, if I gotta say anything, I gotta say my measurements were pretty darn on. Ooh, okay. The double sided tape. Uh, let me grab a spatula. Oh, I got one right here. <laughs> oh, pizza record, anyone? <laughs> Easy does it. <laughs> yep. Look at this! Oh, it's so fragile. What? Dude, that's fantastic. Okay. Let's reveal it. Okay, so around the bare nose, it didn't go quite through, which is unfortunate. But that is fixable. 
depth is always fixable. Let's see how peeling this back goes. Don't break the vinyl! <gasps> Look at this! Look at this! Oh, the pulling off this tape is so satisfying. <laughs> Okay, look at that! Wow, again, so it didn't cut all the way through around the head, and then on the rear, it didn't cut all the way through as well. But look at it! I mean, I'm impressed. So again, my cut settings were using a 1 16th bit. I used a 14.4 inch feed, a 9 inch plunge, at a depth per pass of four hundredths of an inch, which was the thickness of the material. So everything just went over once. And it started off at 24 inches per minute feed rate, and then I slowed it down because it seemed to be struggling a little bit, and the router itself was set to a number four. For experimentation purposes, I'm gonna go ahead and just give this a couple of quick layers of spray paint. And I'm curious as how this emphasizes the image or diminishes it. So, let's do this. What do you think? Better? Worse? Different? Hmm, I'm not sure if I like it. I'm going to share with you probably the coolest part of this whole carve right now. Look at this. The wasteboard that I made, not a mark on it. That means I am getting stinking good at measuring my material. And I'm super excited about that. Well, that was a 7-inch vinyl record. Let's try 12. Um, with this test, what we're going to do is we're going to still use the 1 16th inch end mill bit. Uh, but on this record, what I'm going to do is just cover the whole thing with blue tape on top of it and see if that's enough to hold everything together. Maybe, uh, no, actually strike that. We're going to cover the back with blue tape and then we're going to cover the whole thing on top with blue tape and see if that is enough clamping force to one hold this thing together and keep it flat so let's get to that you know at this point i should probably just buy stock in blue tape <laughs> This is what we're going to try and cut. What I always do is I go ahead and put a perimeter circle so I know how things are going to be laid out. I'm using ABS and I'm going to use the same cut settings as before and the simulation is 23 minutes, give or take. Let's see how it goes. Well, I can tell you a lot about this piece. One, uh, I forgot to put the tabs in the feet so they are free to flop around. Now, I did remember the one on top, so that's good, but if you're gonna cut out vinyl, don't forget the attachment tabs. They're vitally important. The other thing that I did find, so the blue tape method worked amazing. If you can see the bit here, um, it doesn't have hardly any of those little arms that normally get attached to it when we were doing it the first time. 
um, I think the blue tape just held everything together. Now, the material, as the bit was running through it, uh, it kept wanting to raise. And so every time the bit moved, um, the material wanted to raise. And so what I noticed is that in some areas, I'm actually going to have to see if it punched all the way through because it was... Um, yeah, it was just moving so much. I guess that one came off. Um, but I got this one and this one right here that I'm not sure came all the way through. So let's try and demold this thing and see how it actually looks. Okay, okay. I have no idea what the best method is going to be in order not to break the vinyl. But we're going to give it a go. See what happens. guys uh i'm a little bit mesmerized by how cool this thing looks even with my little mistakes and everything um i'm impressed the double side not the double sided tape but taping both sides kind of as a sandwich did help the cut i think a fair bit and this is definitely not one that you could set and leave because the little bits and chunks kept flying off and they could have gotten in the way of the bit for the new hole and that could either damage your machine or just totally botch and ruin the cut. So this is an all hands on deck kind of a piece, but I'm sitting back and I'm kind of speechless and impressed. I mean, it looks good. I mean, I think it looks good. There's a few more designs, logos, and animals that I would like to try before I move forward in this process because I do have six prototypes to make by the end of next week and uh, I got a commissioning to make these prototypes to potentially actually get a, a sellable job using this style of art and I'm excited and again scared <laughs> because this is all new and we're gonna go for it full force but thank you so much for joining in and hopefully you've learned something I know I certainly have I would love to see what you guys come up with regarding records and cuts and carves or lasers or however all that plays out. So show me in the comments what you guys are doing. I'm super excited to see who else is doing things like this and uh, it's going to be fun. So thanks for joining in and I'll catch you next time.